வணக்கம் லெட் அஸ் பிகின் அவர் ஜேர்னி ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் அண்ட் லேர்னிங் அபவுட் ரொமட்டாய்ட் ஆர்த்ரைட்டிஸ் இன் திஸ் இன்ட்ரோடக்டரி வீடியோ இட் இஸ் அ மோஸ்ட் யூனிக் டிசீஸ் ப்ராசஸ் தட் ஹேஸ் வேரி ப்ரெசன்டேஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஈக்வலி வேரி டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ப்ரோட்டோகால்ஸ் போத் மெடிக்கல் அண்ட் சர்ஜிக்கல் of course we shall not forget to learn about how this disease process occurs and what happens within the joint which is the primary point of affectation in rheumatoid arthritis before we go into the elaborate and detailed study of this disease process known as rheumatoid arthritis which is going to be done in a series of simple and animated video lectures we shall first see a short introductory video about the unique features of this disease rheumatoid arthritis is very simply a chronic systemic immune system mediated inflammatory disorder of unknown etiology that primarily involves the joints so first it is a chronic disease Rheumatoid arthritis with a symptom duration of fewer than 6 months is defined as early rheumatoid arthritis and when the symptoms have been present for more than 6 months it is defined as established rheumatoid arthritis Rheumatoid arthritis can also be a systemic disease with almost every system of the body being affected if untreated rheumatoid arthritis is a progressive disease with morbidity and increased mortality every every single system of the body can be affected depression is a significant complication of rheumatoid arthritis it presents in patients with long term active disease and debilitating physical dysfunction actually a 2013 meta analysis reported a 17 to 39 percent prevalence of depression in patients with rheumatoid arthritis coronary artery disease has a strong association for rheumatoid arthritis so here this disease is an independent risk factor for the development of coronary artery disease and accelerates the development of cad in these patients this could also be due to the accelerated atherosclerosis which can become the primary cause of morbidity and mortality in patients with rheumatoid arthritis pleuritis bronchiolitis and interstitial lung disease are associated with rheumatoid arthritis there is also a increased risk of pulmonary embolism actually some patients may present with interstitial lung disease before developing joint inflammation with positive rheumatoid factor the same inflammatory processes that damage joints in rheumatoid arthritis can also affect the liver leading to mild to moderate inflammation t b cell and macrophage infiltration into the liver and such patients have a higher likelihood of developing other autoimmune conditions that affect the liver such as primary biliary cirrhosis autoimmune hepatitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis it may show as subclinical liver changes such as elevated liver enzymes and mild inflammatory changes in liver biopsies it has been noted that there is an increased prevalence of development of atheromatous plaques in patients with rheumatoid arthritis there is also an increased risk of venous thromboembolic disease in such patients this increased risk for thromboembolic disease in rheumatoid arthritis could also be related to the medications that are given for the treatment of the condition the skin could manifest rheumatoid nodules which are a collection of macrophages and lymphocytes along with necrotic tissues skeletal muscle could show increased protein breakdown leading to weakness of the muscles other systemic involvement in rheumatoid arthritis are osteopenia and osteoporosis all these systemic problems may lead to serious infections in such patients or even premature death it is basically defined as an immune system mediated inflammatory disorder it is a chronic inflammatory disorder caused in many cases by interaction between genes 
and environmental factors including tobacco. Though the exact etiology is unknown, it has been understood that both genetic factors and environmental factors play a very important role in the development of rheumatoid arthritis. Along with genetic and environmental factors, obesity is also another well-established risk factor for rheumatoid arthritis. There is a 30% increase in the risk of developing the disease for patients with a body mass index greater than 30 kg per square meter and a 15% increased risk for those with a body mass index of 25 to 29.9 kg per square meters. Finally, the most important involvement of rheumatoid arthritis is the primary involvement of the joints and this is characterized by multiple joint involvement usually more than five and symmetrical involvement on both hands or feet. Joint inflammation over time leads to the destruction of the joint with loss of cartilage and also with bone erosions. The common joints that are affected in rheumatoid arthritis are the small joints, particularly the metacarpophalangeal joints of the fingers, the proximal interphalangeal joints of the fingers, or sometimes the metatarsophalangeal joints of the toes. As the disease process worsens, large joints and proximal joints like the shoulders, the elbows, the knees and the ankles can also get involved. But such a unique disease is definitely not new. It has been reported in Greek and Roman literature. But the modern history of this rheumatoid arthritis begins in the year 1800 when Augustin Jacob Landre Bouvet described the condition very similar to rheumatoid arthritis and called it primitive asthenic gout. Alfred Baring Garrard in 1858 was the first person to call it rheumatoid arthritis. In 1957, the International League Against Rheumatism officially adopted the term rheumatoid arthritis. To understand the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis, according to the Global Burden of Disease Study in 2020, 17.6 million people were affected worldwide. This was actually an increase of 14.1% more than the prevalence in 1990. And it is also predicted that there would be about 31.7 million rheumatoid arthritis patients by 2050 according to the Global Burden of Disease Study in 2021. But the prevalence is not the same throughout the world. A meta-analysis done in 2021 showed that the prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis in different continents was varying. In North America, the highest prevalence was noted and seen to be around 0.7% of the population. It was followed by Europe where there was a 0.54% population involvement and in Africa where there was 0.52% involvement. The least was seen in Asia and South America where the involvement was 0.3%. So what is so unique about this disease that we are going to study? It has got various etiological factors that have been proposed starting from genetic involvement to environmental factors as we have already seen. So we need to understand the genetic predisposition and the various environmental factors and how they can affect the pathogenesis of the disease and how the immune reaction starts leading to joint involvement. Once the pathogenesis is understood, we also need to understand the morphology of the involvement of the joints. How is it that the joints are involved? Why is it that deformities develop? There are varied clinical presentations in the hand, but all these are representative of advanced disease. It is important that we detect or diagnose the condition in the early stages. But there is a very big disadvantage here. 
There is no single pathognomonic laboratory test for rheumatoid arthritis and this makes the diagnosis of this disease challenging in the early stages. So a comprehensive clinical approach is required to make the diagnosis and prevent debilitating joint damage. And as we have already seen, there are varied presentations when different body systems are involved. We need to understand all this involvement in rheumatoid arthritis. We need to understand the classification systems for rheumatoid arthritis and also learn to differentiate rheumatoid arthritis from other similar inflammatory arthritis problems. Relevant investigations to diagnose the stages of the disease will also have to be done. After understanding the etiology, the pathogenesis and the clinical features, we need to first control the disease with drugs. We have already seen that uncontrolled rheumatoid arthritis can lead to severe morbidity and even premature mortality. And when the various deformities present, we need to understand the surgical management and the principles involved. And all these we shall see in our upcoming videos. I hope you liked this introductory video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see other clinical conditions in the hand that need surgical management. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics.